I'm excited. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast retelling and a big guy, like a, just, just, I mean, it's giving five stars. I, every time I say that, let me not say that. It was too much of a character, caricature. Okay, I can't say it. I'm not even gonna try anymore. It's fine. I don't know if I'm gonna be putting this ensemble on every time I come and update you guys. This was just for the intro, strictly for the intro. Um, what the hell was that? It, it needed to stop. This is not gonna be a new thing. Referencing emojis during sex is not gonna become a thing. Okay, we don't want that. No one wants that. It felt like Twilight, but shorter and more cringy. You better get your balls, find them, find your confidence. I'm just tired of Harry Potter references and books. Like, hang it up, all right? Just hang it up, please. And you know I want to start with my girl, Tiana. Even though I'm still mad they made her a frog the whole damn movie. You are not serious right now in 2022. He's also bisexual, so we love a bisexual king. <sighs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hello. Can everyone guess what this video is going to be themed off of yet? Here's a big, huge black hint. Good morning. I've come to return the book I borrowed. Finished already? Oh, I couldn't put it down. So, hello, 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 booktubing world. It is I, Capri Nicole, and I am back with another video. So, I am super, 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 super excited to do this video because it's gonna be the era of my experiment videos. And honestly, I've been having these ideas for a really long time. And when you're a creator, sometimes you have to step outside of the box and you have to do things that you don't see other people doing and do things that make you happy. This looks a little crooked. Let me fix you guys. So obviously, if you are new here, make sure you hit that like button, that share button, that subscribe button because we are getting into a little Disney princessa experiment video. So this series is gonna be basically me reading like Disney princesses. Now, I grew up on Disney, I grew up on Cartoon Network, I grew up on Nickelodeon, those are just my babies, and I love Disney princesses, okay? I'm not a Disney adult, but I do love the movies. So, I figured it would be really fun to do like experiment videos based off of Disney princesses. And you know I want to start with my girl, Tiana. Even though I'm still mad they made her a frog the whole damn movie and I was on strike for like 13 years and didn't watch it until literally this year, I still love her character. I wanted to start with her, but I decided to start with Belle, the OG, because she's a reader. So it would be so easy for me to start the series with Belle. I'm excited. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to be doing an experiment video where I read like Belle for a week. I did my research, watched both of the movies. The cartoon one is, is my preference. I have I watched the live action one in theaters once and never watched it again, okay? It's not really my thing. I like the cartoon one. So I did my research and I read my articles and it really wasn't too hard because like the whole theme around Belle is that she's a reader, she loves libraries. One of the gifts that Beast gave her in the movie literally is a whole library. Like, could you imagine? It was easy for me to like pick pick apart the movie, the live action movie and the cartoon movie to find little gems. I read this article, which I will leave in the description box below, that really details and pick points every single part in the live action that was referenced to books. I'm gonna be reading four books. In this video, I'm going to be reading books that are basically themed off of Beauty and the Beast and basically themed off of references that Belle has made in the movies. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is reading a retelling. So this is a book that just recently came out and it is like a Beauty and the Beast retelling but in modern day. It follows a girl who feels like she's stuck at her job and she's like stuck in life because she's not getting paid enough and she's still living with her parents and she thought she was going to be making it in the bookish, you know, workforce but she still feels stagnant and she gets sent to get in contact with one of these authors who is really grumpy he does not want to release his book and he's like hard to work with so it's just loosely based off of Beauty and the Beast that's one of the tags so it's going to be a retelling I'm also going to be reading all along you are blooming because come on like this just looks like a Belle book okay so Belle references poetry a lot in the movie and so I had to find a Belle-ish, you know, themed poetry collection. There's a lot of pictures in this book 
and it's just so beautiful and I felt like Belle was really just had a really big imagination and she was so full of life and color and just I just went with that theme and so I found a, a poetry collection that follows all of that. I know she references it in the live action one but she references Romeo and Juliet. I had to find Romeo and Juliet retelling which is Roman and Jewel which I'm going to be listening to on audiobook. I got it on Scribd. The last book that I'm going to be reading is going to be a book with a prince because in the beginning when she's singing and dancing through the town you know doing what Belle do she basically said the last thing that she read was a romance novel but she didn't see that he was Prince Charming until chapter three so I was like girl find a book with Prince Charming find something that's like slow burn romance I found a book that has a prince in it and it is a slow burn romance because they're not enemies but they're kind of like enemies to lovers they don't like each other and they are also forced in close proximity which like the movie if you've seen Belle and Beast are in close proximity for the whole movie so those are the four books I'm gonna be reading I'm super excited to talk to you guys about it I don't know if I'm gonna be putting this ensemble on every time I come and update you guys this was just for the intro strictly for the intro and I will be putting pictures up on my Instagram but other than that I'm not putting this shit on every time I update y'all Y'all might see me with a bonnet, y'all might see me in my car, that's just what it is, okay? I want to also venture out to different libraries in my county because Belle was a library girl. She loved the library, she loved to borrow books, and so we want to just embrace the character, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going in this outfit, I'm simply not. These animals love making noise when I start filming. So, anyway, so let me know if you guys have read any of these books and if you're excited to watch this video Please leave a little teacup emoji in the, in the comment section below and make sure you stay tuned to join the emoji gang So you can find out what emoji to leave at the end of my video You know, I got y'all with the timestamp, so you don't even got to worry about it But please stay tuned for the whole video if you like this video make sure you share it in your story share it on your Twitter share it wherever and also let me know what Disney princess you want me to do next because I already think I know who I want to do but we're just gonna focus on Belle for now okay let's start the video Okay, so it's time to update about a book for reading like Belle. The book that I read was Prince on Paper, which is the third book in the Reluctant Royal series by Alyssa Cole. And I'm pretty sure I've read almost every book in the series, but I really enjoyed this one. So let's get into some of the goods and some of the bads and some of the feels and whatever. So I listened to this book on audiobook. Two times speed it was about five hours. I really enjoyed it. I feel like her books are short and sweet and to the point. Unless you get the mass paperback copy, then the words are just small and it feels like it never ends. Let's talk about what this book is about. So this book follows a prince that is kind of like the playboy in his country. So the prince's name is Johan and the love interest, her name is Naya. And Naya is kind of like struggling because her father did something that put her in a negative light. For this specific book, you would have to read the other books in the series to understand who she is and her background and her issues with her father. But she's struggling with that and she's really trying to take back her life and make her own reputation and, and become her own person. She's always found Johan attractive and he also has found her attractive, but in order for him to combat it, he just ignored her. So she just took it as him being rude. It's not really an enemies to lover situation, but she felt like he didn't like her. Because they keep getting in these situations where they're in close proximity, they end up building a friendship. And it's really just like cute to see. Like I really enjoyed it. I like both of their characters. Johan sleeps he sleeps with a teddy bear which is the most adorable thing ever he's a very like soft sweet gentle person which is so funny because in the book and in the public eye he's seen as this playboy who doesn't care about anybody and all this stuff so to see him you know cuddled up with a teddy bear that has like a really grumpy face it's just like so adorable so let's get into the nitty and the gritty the things i like the things i didn't like one of the things that i said that i liked was the fact that they're both kind of seen publicly in the negative eyes so they can kind of draw that connection together and it really just 
it was precious it was so cute he was so gentle and slow and understanding with her he's also bisexual so we love a bisexual king there is non-binary rep in here i really like seeing the plays of royalty it wasn't really heavy in politics but you got to see kind of like certain little royal aspects of the book i also like seeing all the other characters from all the other books i think the only book i haven't read is the second one but i've read all the other ones so it was cool to see them kind of like pop up also there was a part that is one of my new favorite tropes <laughs> he faints and she catches him i'm sorry i just like it's just something about when everyone thinks a guy is grumpy and mean and all this stuff and they end up just being like a super soft empath that is like really gentle and delicate and him fainting because he forgot to eat and her catching him and then her bikini top popping off hilarious like <laughs> and even though in the movie beauty and the beast she says that she didn't find out he was prince charming until chapter three which is when they kiss in this book they didn't kiss until chapter 11 so it was like a true slow burn burn it on up they had good communication that was something else that i like oh there's this scene where she touches him and then he does like the hand flex thing <sighs> Like he just like because she just touched up so cute. Now let's talk about some things I didn't like. The only thing I can think of that I didn't like was she kept like okay because oh, I don't want to spoil it, but <laughs> how can I say this? She kept referencing emojis during like their sexy time. You know what I'm saying like, girl, why are you saying eggplant emoji when he kept trying to get down and dirty? All right, and she was saying like thing and stuff like that. And like the first time I'm like, okay, you know, sis is a little inexperienced, you know. I'm gonna let her have that one. I'm gonna let her have that one. But the second time, I was like, all right, girl, you can't say peach emoji. You can't say all the. Like, y'all trying to get down. Like, sis, I'm gonna need you to get it together. It was cute the first time. It really wasn't cute the first time. It was cringy the first time, but I let you slide. The second time, it, it, no. It, it needed to stop. This is not gonna be a new thing. Referencing emojis during sex is not gonna become a thing. Okay? We don't want that. No one wants that. It wasn't really anything else I didn't like about the book. It all tied together well. I enjoy both of the characters. They had cute little pet names. So if pet names is one of your favorite tropes, that's in there as well. I don't want to say it reminded me of Beauty and the Beast, but it was just like kind of similar where like, because the Beast was an asshole, but he was seen as like mean and grumpy or whatever. But then Belle just like softened him up. This main character, this prince, he was never mean and grumpy. He just did that for paparazzi for specific reasons to protect his family so that is the book that i just finished let me know if you've read this book i'm probably gonna give it i'm gonna say like a 3.5 it was cute it was fun i like seeing the character development for both of them i will check back in with you guys for the next book all right so if you guys hear moving around it's pebs she's up here in her basking area making all the noise because as you know if you're an OG here, all my animals love to make noise every time I film. So today, we're gonna be going to a tea shop. I don't know why, but when I think of Beauty and the Beast, I immediately think of tea. Maybe it's because there's a lot of like antiques and tea shops in there. I kind of want to go to an antique shop as well, but I didn't see really too many in my area, but I might still check one out. So tea shop, number one. So while I go get tea, I'm going to be reading the poetry collection all along You Were Blooming. I think in the live Beauty and the Beast, she mentions poetry. So that's why I'm picking up this poetry collection. So when I go get tea, I'm gonna be reading this. Let's head on to the tea shop. Wise and poor and thank the Lord I that the napkins freshly pressed. With dessert, she'll want tea. And my dear, that's fine with me.
All right, y'all. <laughs> As you know, I don't feel like putting the stand on, so y'all are sitting on the printer. Just rock with me for now. I just finished the poetry collection for All Along You Were Blooming, which was the poetry book that I read for Reading Like Belle. And I'm not gonna lie, it, I really enjoyed it. Some of the poems were really, really simplistic. I love the art in the background. It really just added to it. It kind of reminded me of that like milk and honey book, but way better and like more descriptive. But like the simplicity of like that style of writing but not as like tumblr -y or dark. I loved it, loved all the flowers and the sunsets and the night skies. It was split up into four parts. The four parts were for the heart, for the mind, for the body, and for the soul. I'm a part of the dog ear squad. So squadrant raise up, raise on up. I did dog ear a lot of these, if you could see it. I don't know if you guys could see that, but I was a dog earring girl. And let me see where I dog eared the most. It looks like the last two sections. So it seems like I enjoyed for the body and for the soul the most. But all in all, the poems seem similar in a way in each section. But I love them. There were some that were hard hitting, there were some that were simple, there were some that were encouraging, some that were just nice, you know? And the pictures, I think I really just love the pictures. Like I just love I love things that are very colorful. So I really enjoyed this. I've been trying to dip a toe, dip a toe into poetry, but I have not been having luck. I've read, I read, but I'm not gonna say I haven't had luck. I've only read one poetry book. Started another one, lost it. I don't know where I put that book. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get into my poetry era, you know? But for this video, I read this one. I enjoyed it. I guess I would say, I give it like a, I give it like a four star. I give it like a four star. I wasn't like, oh, this is so beautiful. I love it. But I really did enjoy it. Four stars for this one. So I love how floppy this is. I'm sorry. Like, ah, oh, look how floppy it is. Love a good floppy book. It's just, and it's like extra large too. It's like a larger print. I'm excited to read this. I also have a Beauty and the Beast retelling on my Kindle. So I might pick that one up as well. We'll see. I'll check in with you guys later. Hi. Actually, Romeo and Juliet's my favorite play. Ugh. Why is that not a surprise? So I have finished another book in the Reading Like Bell series, and this is the final audiobook. The next two are going to be physically, and then I also found another retelling of Beauty and the Beast. I really like the cover, but it's on Kindle. So it would be kind of cool to do like two audiobooks, two physical, and one Kindle edition of all the books that I'm reading. But anyway, let's get into the book that I just finished. So the book that I just finished was Roman and Jewel, which was like a Romeo and Juliet retelling. It came out last year, I want to say. I would give it a... I'm gonna say like a three star, not 3.2, not 3.5, not 3.7, like a flat three star. I say like 2.75 three star. So this book basically follows these two main characters who are in high school. Well, one of them, I think he's out of high school. So one of them is the main character's name is Zeppelin and he's 19 and the girl main character, her name is Jersey and she's 17. And they're both trying to star in the retelling of Romeo and Juliet with a modern twist to it, which is like a Broadway show and it's really big and everyone's really excited for it. So she's up for this role and she ends up missing out on the role because there's this really big superstar, like a Rihanna-esque girl that ends up getting the part. And you know, when it comes to Broadway, they want they money back, okay? So it's all about ticket sales and really, the girl, her name is Sin, she would bring in the money. So Sin ends up getting the part of Juliet in this play and Jersey ends up being her understudy. So Jersey and Zeppelin end up running into each other and they basically have like instant, insta love. Like as soon as he sees her, like she's the one and he just likes her so much. And you know, the little, their little meeting was really cute. I mean, she did get clunked in the head, but their meeting, <laughs> their meeting was cute. That's basically the synopsis of the story. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's get into what I liked, what I didn't like, yada, 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 yada. Start with the bad, end with the good. Okay, the first thing that I didn't like was that she was a little bit too obsessive over him. And I also didn't like that 
we didn't get the dual POV. I just, people need to understand when it comes to romance or when it comes to having romance in a book, we need the dual POV. Like we need to hear it from his side. We need to hear it from her side. We need to hear it together. Because like, if I don't like her POV, and I'm just stuck with her the whole time, it, get, it gets tired. And I just like to hear the same situation, but from two different perspectives. Uh, I didn't have too many things I didn't like. Oh, there was a lot of Harry, there was a few Harry Potter references, but just like, I think it just was there to be like a nerdy, geeked out moment, but I'm just tired of Harry Potter references and books. Like, hang it up, all right? Just hang it up, please. She was very dramatic. <laughs> like, there were so many parts where she was just like, over the top hey mama it was like girl we get it any character that you know that's like an over dramatic like woe is me like everything's the end of the world type situation that's how she was but it's like she's 16 going on 17 teenagers are like that sometimes i have two more things zeppelin kind of felt like a character caricature <laughs> wow i can't say that word caricature I'm saying it in my head, but it's not coming out the way I want it to. <laughs> he just felt like a cutout version of like a swoony Romeo. Like he just was like handsome. He played the guitar, he was motorcycle, blah, 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 blah. Like all his personality traits were very flat. We did get a little bit of a backstory with his family and got to see a little bit of his like family aspect because he's Italian, so we got to see that. We got to see his backstory with his mother, but sometimes he just felt too cut outy. Like he just was too cut out. It, it was it was too much of a character. Caricature. Okay, I can't say it. I'm not even gonna try anymore. It's fine. I also felt like what I can't say what happened, but something happened and, and I, th I thought it was just like unnecessary. I felt like the last like maybe like three chapters could have just been completely cut out. Like completely cut out. But let's get into the good things that I liked. Oh, another thing I didn't like, I put in my notes, new trope I don't like unlocked is when characters are high. This is the third book that I've read where character is smoking weed and they get high. And the way that it's just depicted it is so annoying i just i hate to hear it i don't like it i don't like hearing about it it's not like it makes me uncomfortable it's just mad annoying it's just like i hearing someone be high on page is just so aggravating unless they're just like mellowed out and chilling other than that it's just so damn annoying that was another thing i didn't like but anyway let's get into things i did like i liked the retelling i like that there was broadway added into it i'm not a broadway girly but it was fun to follow around and see something see the girl be really passionate about something i liked her name jersey and it was spelled j-e-r-z-i i, I love that <laughs> i love that i like that they did a really good job with the retelling because i feel like sometimes authors are like late as of lately authors have been doing retellings but they kind of just lose the original story like you're supposed to have everything loosely based off of the original story so it's like if you're doing a retelling you need to draw from that. So for this one, I feel like they drew from it a lot. You had the insta love, you had mentions of suicide in there as well. The balcony was mentioned a lot, but in a modern way. Books from Romeo and Juliet were mentioned as well. It just really drew from Romeo and Juliet in a good way. And they made it modern. And then they added in the play and they added in the Broadway. And it just, it was, they did a good job with that. They also touched on gentrification, which I love to see in stories. Else, did I like anything else in this book? Oh, the audiobook was good. That was it. The audiobook was good. Whoever narrated that book, they did a really good job. Also, your girl just hit her Goodreads goal. I'm officially at fit. Well, technically 51. I'm officially at 51 books. Met my Goodreads goal, and we're only in July, so who knows? I'm not gonna say I'm gonna finish. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna do 100 books in a year. I'm, not, I'm simply not gonna say that. It hasn't happened yet. It ain't gonna happen, and that's what it is. I want to go to like a really pretty library, and I just want to get the Belle vibes. You know, I want to get the the Belle vibes. Not just reading the books like Belle, but also getting the Belle vibes. I'll catch up with you guys later. You guys. <laughs> I just finished Bella and Her Beast on my Kindle, which was basically a paranormal-esque Beauty and the Beast retelling. I don't know what that was, but I'm gonna tell you what it was not. It. It was not it, okay? It felt like, it felt like Twilight 
but shorter and more cringy. It was giving cringy ass Twilight. All of my Kindle Unlimited books that I've read so far have all been hits. I've run into my first flop. I just have to accept that. And here we are accepting that together. Look at us experiencing something together. Um, What the hell was that? Oh, actually, you know what? Let me check and see when this was published. Maybe, I mean, it felt like it was written in like 2002. Like it was giving me 2002 vibes. This shit came out in January of 2022? I don't think so. <laughs> the author needs to go back to the drawing board. Like, or maybe this is her debut. Maybe this is her debut. Let me give her the benefit of the doubt. Hell no, nah. she done wrote a whole bunch of books. She been writing, she got a book right here from 2015. Sis, I don't know what that was. Maybe rent was due and she needed a little extra cheddar. But that book was bad. Like, let me tell you what this book was about. Basically, this book follows the main character. Her name is Isabella and she's a librarian that is really into reading she's not like other girls she reads a lot and she doesn't wear a lot of makeup you know she just doesn't need those type of things and she wears glasses and she's just so qu listen i was so tired of hearing about the, the the way that she was described i was so over it i was like listen if y'all describe her as a reader one more time i'm gonna like the way that she i love readers and books but the way that that she was describing her as a reader was driving me Crazy. She's a librarian and there's this mysterious guy that always comes in there and takes books and just reads them there instead of just checking them out like a normal person. So her and her co-worker, her other librarian friend, are like, yo, what's up with this dude? He always coming up in here, sitting up in here, and he could just check the damn book out and go home. Isabella and Grayson end up interacting and he basically says, oh, I'm trying to write a book about paranormal, this paranormal, that, I'm just doing my research. Then they end up dating, or they not even dating child, they end up going on a date. He's obviously interested in her. Basically, he's a, he's a werewolf, he shapeshifts into a werewolf. But the way that this man's shapeshifting abilities were being described was driving me crazy. Like, he was talking about his wolf form, like, oh, my wolf. Oh, my beast. Oh, the beast within. Oh, I was like, you cannot, you not serious, right? In 2022, in 2022, you not serious right now. You are, ma'am, you, you are not serious right now in 2022. Oh, the beast growled within and uh, I know you fucking, I know you lying right now. Like you cannot be serious. The way that his, his wolf was described as an alter person like inside of him it was just weird it was just mad cringy it was just mad cringy like it was so cringy and then isabella she was like i guess cuban she's cuban and black well i don't know if she black child but i know she's cuban and the way that spanish was mixed into this book was aggravating me well, how would she describe it? you always be like oh my grandmother would say this in my ancestors native tongue espanol and it's like just say spanish like just say span just say spanish why you gotta say my grandmother would say this in espanol why it was just, it was just the way that it was put in the book it was so cringy and then like it would be these little Spanish sentences that was just like felt like it was written by Google Translate. Like it wasn't like a flowing Spanish sentence. Like it just felt so robotic and so unauthentic and so unnecessary. Like, like she was really driving home that this girl was not like other girls and that she's Cuban and she speaks Spanish and her ancestors and all this. We get it. We get it. We got it. We got it. Anyway, his family is cursed. All of his family members have the ability to shapeshift into werewolves once they turn 18. And then they're cursed to where they have to stay in wolf form once they hit the age of 25. 
so the only way this curse can be broken is if you find your one true love before the age of 25 and they fall in love with you so basically like beauty and the beast esque you know touch and go touch and go beauty and the beast this was so cringy like i can't believe she wrote this in 2022 if i looked this up and this shit said 2002 i would have understood i would have just hung it up to twilight era cringy era whatever to early 2000s you know 2010 whatever i would have hung it up 2022 you wrote this in 2022 it's not adding up it's not adding up <laughs> i don't even i don't even i don't even know what to say like I was not having a good time. I was ready for it to be over. I wasn't getting, I've been angrier reading a book, but I was just annoyed by the writing. The writing just was really bad. Melodrama-esque, that's how I was feeling. But luckily today, the lights went out at my job because it was thunderstorming really bad. So I got to sit down and read this in its entirety while I was at work which was nice i'm grateful for that that's done <laughs> anyway now that that's over with really this is this is really a one star i'm only going to give it two stars because the author is black you know that's it in my mind and between me and you between me and you it's a one star but on goodreads we're gonna give it a two we're gonna leave it at that anyway i have started by the book let me go grab it actually i'm about how many pages in I'm on page 40. So I'm really enjoying this. This is cute. This is honestly, and I don't even notice this is a Jasmine Guillory book. She is popular on booktube. Some people like her shit, some people don't. But I'm excited to dive in for this video. This will be my first Jasmine Guillory book, I think. Cause I don't think I've read any of her other books. Her other books are usually based in like weddings and stuff like that. So yeah, I just started this. I'm really enjoying it. It's following this main character that works at a publishing company and she feels stuck at her job. She doesn't feel like she's gonna get promoted anytime soon. She's been there for two years. And there's this author that they've been trying to get him to write his memoir for years. And, and he, well not years, but they've been trying to contact him to write his memoir because they already cut the check. They gave him his bonus or whatever that writers get. So they like, cause he's a celebrity. So they like, hey, where the book at? Okay, where is the book, sir? So they've been emailing him. They've been sending him gifts. They've been trying to call him, contact him, whatever. And so because she feels so stagnant at her job, she like, listen, I got the balls. Let's do it, baby. She goes up to her boss and says, listen, I'm going to get this book published for you. I'm going to go to his house and I'm going to demand that he talk to me about the blah, whatever. So she go to this man's house. He don't want to talk to her. He like, listen, I already told your whole publishing company. I don't give a damn. If y'all gave me my advance, I ain't writing the book. Leave me alone. Go away. So... Lo and behold, his assistant goes to show her out. She goes to walk her to her car. The girl ended up falling on the damn ground, hurting her ankle. So now she brings her back in the house. He comes down there all grumpy and angry. And he's like, why are you in my house? I told you to get out of my house. And she like, I was helping her assistant because she fell down. And then she was like, now that you're here, matter of fact, let's talk about the fact that you need to write that book. He started, you know, giving a little bark. And she like, I can bark too. Shit, you know, you, you wouldn't get bucked. <laughs> So she basically pushes and pushes and pushes until he's like, you know what? Fine, you can stay. You can stay here and you can give me all the little cheery, encouraging messages you think that'll help me write this book. And we're going to see if it actually works. So he got this big ass house. He got a whole bunch of money. So she ends up staying there and that's where i'm at right now and i'm really enjoying it i like the main character i love the cover we have a thick boy in here i don't know if he a thick boy but i know he a big boy i like big boys okay so we got a big boy in here he's large like tall and like big i like big men so i mean beauty and the beast retelling and a big guy like a just just i mean it's giving five stars I, every time i say that let me not say that let me not say that because every time i say that i am a peyton damn book but right now i'm enjoying it it has two of my favorite things i love the cover i love the dedication so i'm gonna try to put a dent into this because i have about three hours until i head to bed so i'm gonna try to read some more of this and this is the final book of the video so yeah but i hope i keep enjoying this but so far so good so i'll catch up with you guys later bye
right, y'all. How we looking? All right, we looking good. Titties is not out. I mean, they are, but to a certain extent. We are here gathered today. We got to hurry up because if y'all see this, anybody that's in Atlanta know what this bag is. And if you don't know, I'm going to tell you. A slutty vegan on the weekend your girl gets her moment meals i stopped calling them cheat meals because it's not a cheat it's damn food i call them moment meals so this is the moment meal for saturday and it's slutty vegan which is a vegan black owned burger joint and they have the best fries the best burgers and i'm gonna need to eat this immediately slutty vegan is the wave if you haven't had it before please have it i think she's in different states now i'm not sure but anyway I'm here to close this vlog out. So, final book of the vlog. And I just have to say, yes. Like, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. That's all I have to say is yes. Can you see my tabs? Can y'all see? Tabs on down. Dog ears, tabs. We got the words, baby. So, all in all, the last book that I read for this vlog, Reading Like Bell was by the book, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling by a black author with two black main characters. I mean, what a way to wrap it up. What a way to wrap it up. So I'm gonna tell you guys some things that I didn't like first, cause you know, I like to end with the good shit. So we gonna start about with the things I didn't like. So let me get my notes. Things I didn't like about this book. I was given five stars the entire book up until like 75% in. I think about 75% in, I started getting bored I was like, okay, what what's next? Like, cause you know they're in a they're in a you know secluded location. When I started this book, I was loving it. 50% in, still loving it. 75% in, I was like, baby, what are we doing? Cause this shit this shit boring. I'm bored, and I don't get bored with romances. A lot of the books that I be seeing people saying, oh, I'm bored. I'm, I'm bored. What's next? I be eating it up. Cause I'm a very simple girl when it comes to romance. I just like seeing my black main character is happy, and thriving and spoiled. So. I'm pretty simple, but I was bored with this one. I was like 75% in it. I was like, baby, what, what do we do? Change something up. We need to change something up. Something, something gotta happen. I also didn't like that some of the wording was repetitive. I felt like a lot of the issues I had with this book, it could have been fixed by the editor. I don't know, cause this is my first Jasmine Guillory book. I don't know if this is her first time with this publisher and it's a different editor or whatever because other people are saying this isn't her best work she has better books but yeah a lot of the things that i saw in the book were very repetitive like for one they kept mentioning how big and strong he was and you know i'm the spokeswoman for big boys okay i like big thick large men so when you tell me we got a big boy main character i'm down for it but if they just kept they could have come up with different words to describe this man they kept saying big they kept saying strong they kept talking about his shoulders i was like baby come give us something give us more like you're giving us nothing go girl give us nothing another thing i didn't like was the fact that <sighs> if y'all been here a while y'all know i don't like self-deprecating main characters main characters that you know if you second guess yourself in the beginning and then you slowly build up your um confidence later on i can deal with that but if the whole damn book you just oh what was me what was me what was me type vibes i can't do it i cannot you better get your balls find them find your confidence find it somewhere like i don't want to hear you lying about being you know a thicker girl or whatever and she is size 12 like girl please okay like come on <laughs> kept saying like oh i'm not what he usually likes i'm not what he usually likes he likes smaller model girls like baby it is 2022 the models are thick and juicy now we want the thick and juicy ones on the runway so you can't keep leaning on the model skinny skinny model blonde girls like they said that sentence so many damn times i was like i'm so tired of hearing it another sentence that another thing that was repetitive was the kissing 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 like you can describe a kiss in a different way but just saying over and over and over again the way that y'all are kissing kissing was like on the same page like 50 times i'm like we got to come up with a different word please so yeah the repetitiveness i really felt like that is something the editor should have probably picked up on and been like hey you're saying this a few times too many 
Okay, that that's on him. Or whoever the hell edited it. Another thing I didn't like, this was from the beginning. She got in that damn house too quick for me. I would have preferred if she got in the house by being kicked out. He didn't let her in. And then she stood out there because she was like, I'm going to make this happen. And, and, and stood her ground and waited and waited and waited. And then like... I don't know, like passed off from dehydration or being hungry or him bringing her a lemonade and feeling bad and let her in the house after like an hour or so. I would have rather that. He let her in that damn house too fast. Like, you don't even know this girl. You let her stay at your house. Like, I'm sure he did it thinking that she wouldn't stay, but she got in that house real quick. I know it's for the purpose of the story or whatever, but it was too fast for me. And the final thing I didn't like about this book was there was no sex. We didn't even get a fade to black. It was just kissing. Like they were in high school. Like at your big age of 25 and 26, ain't no fing in this book. There's no fing in this book. There's no fing in this book at 25 and 26. At your big age. Y'all got all that castle, that big ass house, and y'all ain't fing up in there? Please. We didn't even get a faded black moment. It was just straight up, just kissing high schoolers, giddy, giddy, giddy type shit. That's what it was giving. Yeah, didn't like that. But let's talk about some of the things I did like. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give this book a 4.5. She was giving five stars up until 75% and I got bored. And then the ending, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna give it a four. But then the ending, them last like 20 pages i just have to give it a 4.5 i loved obviously that we got black love rep up in here a little slow burn romance situation i really enjoyed the way that they were working together the way that they communicated and talked to each other the way that she was really there to push him and give him pep talks and believe in himself but while she was doing that she was taking her own advice and also writing because she's a writer she's in publishing but she does like to write and i just i love to see it like i love to see it they were very happy together and he was very gentle and sweet with her and i just just their interactions were just so pure i was just eating it alive i was eating it alive i also enjoyed that they were both foodies me and my man are both foodies we love to eat baby we love to when we go on vacation we hit all the restaurants hey all right, in Atlanta, we like to hit all the restaurants. Hayes, we love to eat, we love to cook. Yeah, so we're foodies, but just seeing them snack and him bringing her food and just food and snacks are a love language. They need to add that to the categories because it is a love language, all right? And just seeing him make her waffles and, and chips, and she's a chip girly. I myself am a chip connoisseur. So, it was nice to see that. I love to see it. I really enjoyed that. I like the fact that she was working in publishing. I also enjoyed the small hints of magical realism. As you know, in Beauty and the Beast, all of the pots and pans and all this stuff were, you know, people. So they were talking and singing and doing all this stuff. So there were small moments where she's like, oh, I thought the bathtub talked to me, but I'm just tripping or whatever. And it just was like small little touches of soft magical realism. I also liked his name. His name was Bo. Cute can't get any cuter and again i love to see black girl peace i like to see my girl spoiled living it up in the bikini in a castle i don't ask for much i just like to see my black girls at peace not traumatized not being cheated on all this crazy shit i just love to see it and she was getting all the soft girl vibes in this whole book also enjoyed the emotional development in Bo and both of them honestly but as far as his character is concerned the reveals with his family issues and his past and him growing as a person getting therapy listening to her he was listening to what she was saying and really growing as a character i really enjoyed that and the final thing i have to say is i enjoyed the ending them last 10 15 20 pages that reveal that's what gave it the 4.5 baby because it was given three and a half four stars i had to push it to a 4.5 because that ending page 304 page 304 my favorite quote out of that whole little moment. I finished this book in the library, and finished the book there. I was swooning, I was giggling, I was just flustered. The ending was phenomenal. So yeah, that's it. So that's it, we're done. I finished, I actually need to finish editing this and get this up for you guys, but that is the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what Disney princess you want me to do next. I really loved reading like Belle. I loved going to the tea shops and the libraries and just, 
reading. All in all, I think it was a great reading experience. I'm gonna say overall my experience is like a, a four. It was fun, I had a great time. I have so many fun videos coming up for you guys. So stay tuned for that. Always remember, read a book, keep your life interesting, and I will see you next time, okay? Bye. As old as time, song as old as rhyme, beauty and the beast.